Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Helena Busby, and I am the Deputy Director for EU Strategy and Negotiations at the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs in the UK. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Today, I will be focusing on import controls being introduced on the 1st of October, with a very brief reminder of the 1st of January and 1st of March requirements. This session will build on the event we ran with Irish colleagues back in July this year. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, here is a quick overview of the timeline for all of the import controls coming in for SPS required products from October until March 2022, which I am very sure you are all familiar with by now. If we can move on to the next slide, please, I will talk to you in more detail about the controls for products of animal origin. Export health certificates will be issued to you by the competent authority in Ireland. A certifying officer authorised by the competent authority must complete the official document certificate. They could be an official veterinarian or official inspector as defined by the relevant EU retained legislation. They must have clearly completed all designated fields on the certificate. You must send an electronic copy of the export health certificate to your importer in Great Britain and ensure that a physical copy of the original certified health certificate travels with the consignment. Your importer in Great Britain must upload the electronic copy of the certificate to IPAFS, that stands for the Import of Products, Animals, Food and Feed System, um, as part of the pre-notification process. Any official sanitary or phytosanitary documents that are required to accompany the health certificate, such as additional attestations or lab results, will be specified on the relevant health certificate. Other documentation, documentation may be required depending on the commodity, such as a catch certificate for marine caught fish. Model health certificates are available on gov.uk and you're able to use these to check the specific requirements for your commodity. And I must stress that these are examples of the certificates. The real certificate will be issued by the relevant competent authority in your country. There are more details about how these certificates are filled in on the link at the bottom of this slide. And I can say that these slides will be available after this um, presentation today. If you cannot identify an appropriate health certificate, you should speak with your importer in Great Britain and check gov.uk for an import license. If there is no import license available, you will need to complete an IB58 form and send it to the Animal and Plant Health Agency. This slide contains both a link to that form and the email address to send that form to. Next slide, please, Kathleen. Phytosanitary certificates. So from 1st of January in 2022, all regulated plants and plant products will need to follow the requirements for pre-notification and be accompanied by a phytosanitary health certificate. These will need to be obtained from the plant health authority in the country where the supplier is based. An inspection for the certificate is to play, take place no more than 14 days before the consignment is dispatched from the country where your supplier is based. A copy of the phytosanitary certificate will need to be imported onto the import IT system, PEACH, if you need to pre-notify your consignment until the notification process moves over to the IPAF system later this year. Your importer will be notified when that happens. By March 2022, physical and identity checks on all regulated plants and plant products will be carried out at border control posts. Next slide, please, Kathleen. So IPAFS, which as I said, stands for the Import of Products, Animals, Food and Feed System, is the IT system that enables your importer in Great Britain to notify the relevant authorities of the arrival of animals and animal products subject to sanitary and phytosanitary controls. From the 1st of October 2021, products of animal origin for human consumption, certain animal byproducts and high risk food and feed not of animal origin arriving from the EU will need to be pre-notified via IPAPS. The key thing for EU exporters to remember here is that your importer will need to upload 
this electronic copy of the health certificate that you obtain from the competent authority in Ireland. Laid out in this slide is the information that must be submitted as part of an IPAS pre-notification, which includes what product is being imported, the date it is being imported, which country the imported product is arriving from, and the place of destination of the consignment. Between October and December 2021, importers will be required to submit a simplified notification in IPAS. From January 2022, additional details will be required. At the end of the presentation, I have included links to webinar demonstrations with more details. Next slide, please, Kathleen. A quick word on pre-notification times. For products of animal origin, certain animal brine products and high risk food and feed not of animal origin, importers can notify no less than four hours in advance of arrival at the point of entry. Please be aware that this is a temporary arrangement and that from 1st of January, you will need to contact the competent authority at the point of entry to determine if a derogation from 24 hours can be applied. For live animals, IPAFs pre-notification must be made at least one working day in advance of the goods arrival at the point of entry. For plants and plant products, importers need to need to, oh, sorry need to submit import notifications at least four working hours prior to arrival for roll-on, roll-off, and air movements, or at least one working day prior to arrival by all other modes of transport, along with a phytosanitary certificate. Pre-authorisation by DEFRA or the Animal and Plant Health Agency of animal byproducts prior to any imports taking place may also be required. Next slide, please, Kathleen. Now look at composite products in a bit more detail as we receive a lot of questions on this subject. Composite products are foods that contain both processed and pro processed products of animal origin and products of animal or plant origin and where the processing of the primary product is an integral part of the production of the final product. Uh, so this could include lasagna, pork pies, mayonnaise, if it contains more than 50% egg. Composite products must follow the stage requirements for products of animal origin I have just laid out. However, there are a few exceptions. Some goods are exempt if they contain less than 50% processed animal product or no meat product, and they meet the requirements set out in legislation. If your goods contain any meat product or more than 50% animal product, they must be pre-notified using IPAFs, they must be accompanied by an export health certificate and followed the phase approach set out for products of animal origin. If you're not sure this applies to you, there is more detailed guidance, including a composite product decision tree available on the animal imports file sharing link, which you will find at the end of the presentation. The next slide, please, Kathleen. Groupage. So um, this is the term used by your industry to describe the commercial grouping of multiple consignments within a single sealed trailer or container. There are four models that have been developed for importing groupage loads from the EU into the Great Britain. These include consolidation hub method, whereby different consignments are brought together at a single approved premises. The certification takes place for all individual consignments by the certifying officer and the group consignments are loaded and sealed before they leave for onward destination. The sequential or single model, which facilitates pickups from multiple sites, certification takes place at each site. A seal is applied to the overall load at each pickup point removed and placed, replaced at the next pickup. This method is reliant upon a certificate of non-manipulation. There is also the linear or multiple pallet model, which is designed to facilitate pickups from multiple sites with certification at each collection point in the chain. This requires pallet level sealing. Sealed pallets are added to the means of transport and the individual seal number on the pallet recorded on the export health certificate. There is no requirement for a certification, certificate of non-manipulation with this model, but it does require the presence of a certifying officer at each collection point. All models may be used in conjunction with each other, so as far as general principles around sealing and certification remain. For example, traders may wish to blend the linear model with the consolidation hub method. The key with the mixed hybrid approach will be ensuring full traceability of all products entering Great Britain. 
please find a link to a video recording of a webinar which goes through these models in detail on this slide. Next slide, please, Kathleen. EU origin transits. So there'll be new requirements for goods transiting from EU through Great Britain through to the EU again from the 1st of October. Uh, products of animal origin, animal byproducts will require pre-notification on IPAFs and an export health certificate. High risk food and feed stored of animal origin will require pre-notification on IPAFs only. Goods can enter and exit Great Britain through any port with no physical or ID checks required on entry or exit, however. Confirmation that the consignment has left the territory of Great Britain will be required. For those same goods travelling through from EU through Great Britain to the rest of the world, they will require pre-notification on IPAFs and an export health certificate. These goods can also enter and exit Great Britain through any port with no physical or ID checks required on entry or exit. Further guidance, again, is available online. Next slide, please, Kathleen. Um, we've uh, bundled up a few FAQs, which I will talk uh, through briefly. Um, can an IPAS ne notification be made on behalf of an importer by an agent? Yes, uh, that can happen. Up to what point can a trader create amends on IPAF, such as adding the export health certificate? The not notification can be amended at any time in the process. It needs to be submitted and all documentation attached before the minimum notification time. Um, if the container is opened to get the EHC at the inspection post, would the paperwork be updated when the container is resealed by customs officials? So the first part of this question, which is what should be done when the inspection is carried out, the answer is there will be no need to update the EHC as it would have completed the imports or been rejected following inspection. So the second uh, part of the question is, is, is related to what would happen with unaccompanied loads. It is a legal requirement for goods to be accompanied by the original health certificate. It is the exporter's responsibility to ensure that the original health certificate is available when requested at the point of entry. Uh, for products of animal origin for October 1st to January the 1st, the HC does not accompany the load. Can it be forwarded once issued to the place of delivery? The original EHC should be presented and given to officials at the border control post for inspection. It is for the exporter or the logistics handler on their behalf to ensure the documents are available and presented at the BCP to the officials. Uh, next slide. Please, Kathleen. Uh, further guidance, there may be other changes you need to be aware of, such as marketing standards and organics. Uh, please find links to further details on this slide, as well as useful links to further information on everything I have covered today. I would in particular bring your attention to the Plant Health Portal um, and to the file sharing site for animal products. This service does require that you sign up with an email address which may take a few days to process. However, it is full of the latest technical guidance. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here are all the relevant links. I would like to say thank you very much for your attention. As I have said, this presentation will be available after the event. I will now hand you over to my colleague, Jack Stacey, who will talk you through a step-by-step -step case study for exporting chicken from Ireland into Great Britain. Jack, are you there? I'm there, thank you very much. Wonderful. Next slide, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Jack Stacey and I'm from DEFRA's Biosecurity Borders and Trade Programme. Uh, as has just been said, I'll be going through a quick case study uh, following on from Helena's far more detailed presentation, uh, and that will describe the process of exporting chicken from Ireland into Great Britain, uh, and that will be from October until January. Uh, so these are the imaginary protagonists of, of this process. Uh, so we have here Kieran, who is an Irish uh, chicken exporter. We've got Claire, who is a GB importer of Kieran's chicken. Uh, and we've got Joe, uh, who will be transporting the goods between EU and GB. Uh, just to note, in this case, most businesses would probably use a customs agent or a freight forwarder, 
Um, but in, for the purposes of this case study, it's just those named on screen that will be doing the paperwork. Next slide, please. OK, uh, so the first step then, uh, Kieran will need to apply for an EU EORI number, uh, and that'll be to uh, interact with EU systems later on. Next slide, please. OK, uh, so prior to shipping of the goods, uh, both Kieran and Claire will need to agree the INCO terms that they'll trade on, uh, which basically just set out the responsibilities of in, uh, exporting and importing. Uh, for the purposes of this case study, Kieran will be responsible for the export procedures, Claire will, be, Claire will be responsible for the import procedures, and Joe's haulage company will be responsible for safety and security declarations. Uh, and the goods will not be moving under transit in this case. Next slide, please. OK, uh, Claire in turn will need to apply for a GB EORI number uh, if she hasn't already got one. Uh, and that's something that Kieran should make sure that she has before the export begins. Uh, Joe's haulage company would need both as it will ha have to interact with uh, the systems at both ends of the process. Uh, and that will be the case for all parties, um, even if they use a customs agent, because they'll need to be able to quote the, these numbers. Next slide, please. OK, uh, so Kieran at this point will apply for an export health certificate. Uh, and the Irish certifying officer will inspect the goods and certify them, uh, also issuing the certificate. Uh, at this point, uh, Kieran should note that he'll need to do this uh, process of applying for an EHC each time he sends his chicken to Great Britain. Um, so something that Kieran will also have to bear in mind is that the EHC will also have to travel with the goods uh, in most cases, that'll be just simply giving it to the driver who will be transporting them. Um, in order to pre-notify the UK authorities, uh, Claire will need to set up an IPAFS uh, import notification. Um, before that, Kieran should have sent her an electronic scanned copy, uh, which can either be a photocopy or a photograph uh, of the endorsed health certificate. Uh, and it's then for Claire to uh, upload that onto IPAFS as part of the pre-notification. Next slide, please. OK, uh, so at this point then, uh, Kieran will need to submit an export declaration, uh, formerly known as an export accompanying document, uh, and that will be to the Irish Customs System, uh, which is called the Automated Entry Processing System. Uh, this uh, export accompanying document will in turn produce a movement reference number for use later. Uh, on the export declaration, uh, he will also need to list uh, the port of exit. Uh, from there, it will go to Joe's uh, Hawlier firm um, and they'll need to create a pre-boarding notification in the Irish system and insert the movement reference number uh, of the export. Uh, the pre-boarding notification ID will then need to be given to the ferry operator as part of the booking details. <coughs> yeah, so one, one thing to note then, uh, because uh, Kieran has submitted a combined export and safety and security declaration uh, and he's got the EAD as well, uh, he'll need to, a, a separate ex exit summary declaration will not need to be submitted on the member state export control system. Um, but if a combined export declaration wasn't submitted, then a new uh, exit summary declaration would be required. Next slide, please. OK, uh, so at this point, Kieran has submitted the export accompanying document uh, and he's prepared the export health certificate and he's sent an electronic copy to Claire, uh, at which point Joe can now uh, collect the consignment from Kieran and begin taking it into Great Britain. Uh, so uh, Joe's responsibilities then uh, and the responsibility of the haulage company uh, is to ensure that he has all the relevant documentation. So they'll need to check that he has the pre-boarding notification and movements reference number uh, for the export declaration. Uh, he'll need the physical uh, original of the export health certificate. He'll also need the movement reference number and that will be for Claire's import declaration. Uh, and if Joe uh, is not a UK or Irish national, he'll also need to make sure that he brings his passport. Next slide, please. OK, uh, so it's at this point then that the export health certificate will be subject to the remote documentary checks. Um, and 
if uh, if all is uh, well and doesn't require any checks, then uh, Joe will have entered Great Britain with consignment successfully. Next slide, please. OK, uh, so that was a very brief rundown of the responsibilities from the perspective of all parties involved. Uh, just as a quick reminder then of it from the Irish exporters, exporters point of view. Uh, to begin with, you'll need to apply for an EU EORI number. Uh, you'll need to agree the INCO terms with the GB importer. You'll need to apply for an export health certificate and arrange inspection. You'll need to send an electronic copy of this EHC to the importer to upload onto IPAFs. Uh, you'll need to ensure that that original document carry, uh, travels with the goods. And you'll also need to submit the export declaration uh, to Irish Customs. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's the, the process uh, to completion now, in which case I'll hand back to Margaret. Thank you very much, Jack. And uh, I'm really just going to hand over to Damien now. Damien Flynn from the Irish Department of Agriculture. Thank you, Damien. So again, my name is Damien Flynn. I'm the new head of the Bre Brexit and International Trade Division in the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. And today I'm going to be concentrating on the Irish side of uh, the process in terms of uh, ensuring that we can meet UK requirements, which will be coming in from the 1st of October. So I'm briefly going to uh, review some of the, uh, give an update on some of the preparations we've been making uh, to to uh, to uh, meet the UK requirements. Helena and Jack have have have, out, have outlined those UK import requirements, and my presentation today is going to focus on what we've been doing to meet them. Um, uh, I'll also be preparing uh, or giving some uh, detailed steps and process to get an export health certificate for different products and to identify the key actions businesses in the Irish GB food supply chain need to take to be ready for 1st of October. Over 5 billion or some 38, 37% of total Irish agri-food exports go to the UK market, so we need to be ready to meet UK requirements from the 1st of October. Industry, DAFM and other state agents have been working hard to meet these ECRO requirements, specifically the pre-notification requirements and the export health requirements, which will come in from the 1st of October. So briefly, I'm going to run through uh, some of the, the extensive pre pre preparations that have been taking place across government and across the agri-foods and fisheries sectors for these changes. We must continue to ensure all actors in the supply chain know the, de the detail of the requirements and how to meet them. To this end, DAFM and other relevant state agencies, in partnership with food businesses, have been engaging in a wide range of activities to get ready. These include refinement of business processes, both at FBO level and by the department to support export certifications to GB, modification and enhancement of our IT systems to support export certification, provision of appropriate IT infrastructure across the diverse locations of our FBOs across the country to support the generation of certs. To support the scale of additional certification needed, Daffin is implementing a very significant human resource plan, which includes new staff recruitment, redeployment of existing resources, and the use of contracted, contracted temporary staff as required. We have had and continue to have extensive engagement with FBOs and others in the supply chain on their needs through various fora, including surveys, direct local engagement by Daffin technical and veterinary teams, extensive rounds of training on traces, and the Dairy Certification System, DCPS, which includes training on completion of EHC requirements. On training, a comprehensive training plan has been delivered for certifying officers and food businesses to ensure they are familiar with the EU TRACES system. 12 TRACES webinar sessions have taken place so far, including two revision set sessions, which were delivered over the, the summer months. Attendees included DAFM staff, local authority veterinary inspectors, and fuels business operators, supervised by DAFM, HSC and local authorities. FSLIA and industry represent, uh, representatives also attended. We have had 916 attendees over these 12 sessions. A series of revision webinars will also be delivered throughout September. Further details will, will issue shortly on these, and I would urge any businesses who have not, not engaged with these yet to do so during September. We have also had an extensive programme of trials with uh, food businesses. 
to examine how export health certification will be delivered within that and resource capacity and to assess food business preparedness in areas such as IT infrastructure, the systems to provide documentation to support traceability requirements, and to clarify the individual requirements which exist for different products requiring veterinary certification. We have also done some end-to-end -end testing with our UK colleagues in July, which included some testing of the pre-notification requirements on the UK IPATH system. The learnings from these trials and testing have and are informing our approach to refinement of business processes and the learnings are being shared with the industry in various fora, fora including information webinars, our training program, and through the dissemination of anonymized case studies. More broadly, we, are we continue to have a wide range of ongoing engagement with stakeholders, representatives, exporters, other government departments and agencies, with the UK authorities, other EU member states, and the EU Commission. With all this preparation, it is clear that the key challenge for Irish exporters and the Irish competent authorities, DAFM, HSC, Sea Fisheries Protection Agency and local authorities, is to provide export health certification from the 1st of October. The number of additional certs required from DAFM is estimated to be in excess of 240,000, up, up from 60, the current 60 to 70,000 provided for third countries, which is potentially a 400% increase. This is a big challenge, which is even bigger given the geographically dispersed nature of our food businesses and the just-in-time integrated nature of Irish, Irish supply chains to Great Britain. There are some key things your business can do to prepare for these challenges. Examine the model health certificates available on DEFRA's website and confirm the cert that is needed for your products. Identify the correct CN code for the product you are exporting. Identify the individual requirements for each certificate that are relevant for each of your products. Access information from your suppliers and then develop a process for gathering it and making it disavailable in the most appropriate format to your certifying officer. Exporters should, especially those with just-in-time just supply chain, should liaise with their GV customers and request advance orders where possible. Advise, and also advise them of limitations with the new, certifi which the new certification requirements place on, on resources, both at business level and, and for certifying authorities. The IT systems to be used to apply for ex export health certificates vary across the commodity groups. For meat, meat products, meat preparations, composite products, honey and table eggs, the EU traces system will be used to apply for and generate certs. For dairy products, including dairy composites, dairy product certification system, with DAFM's dairy product certification system will be used. For fish and fishery products, the they, they, we will continue to can continue to use the existing sea fishery protection agency processes. Moving on to the detailed export process, there are essentially four main components to exporting to GB. Import number one, importer requirements, which have which my UK colleagues have co covered earlier, specifically the pre-notification on IPAS, which is new from the 1st of October, and also the existing customs requirements which have been in place since the 1st of January. Number two, exporter customs requirements. Exporters must submit the combined export and EXX direct declaration through revenues automated entry processing system. Estimated time of departure must also be completed as part of this declaration. Number three is the new exporter SBS requirements. The, S the exporter must apply for an export health certificate via their competent authority. However, the application varies by slightly by commodity. I will cover these the, the, the processes for different products in further slides. Um, the final step before leaving uh, for the UK, before leaving for the UK, is a, is a useful checklist. Pre-notification declaration to IPAS, export declaration completed, customs documents completed, customs pre-boarding pre notification, uh, PBN secured, and the export health cert is traveling with the load. I will now run through the steps to secure an export health cert by product category, starting with meat and meat composite products. Many of the steps are common to all commodities, so in my slides covering non-meat products, I will highlight I will just highlight the specific elements which are different for each product. The traces system will be used to apply for and generate certs for meat and meat products. 
all businesses exporting these products must ensure that they are registered on traces to ensure they are listed on the approved list of establishments allowed to export to UK and to be able to apply to DAFN for an export health certification. The exporter must make the application for an EHE in traces and at the same time must also alert the relevant regional veterinary office of the upcoming export via email. This should be done five days in advance of export date by completing the basic consignment email details on traces. The application on traces can be made in multiple steps with information that is available in advance being submitted earlier so that the traceability elements required for certification can be verified and the cert can be approved can then be approved quickly once the final details are known for example transport details final weight etc staff and the relevant veterinary office will review the application and issue the cert if requirements are met the eh is generated signed and stamped by the certifying officer generally as an official veterinarian and the original ehc is made available to the exporter the irish exporter can then email a scanned copy of the signed EHC to the GB importer. The GB importer will upload the EHC onto IPAS. This should happen before the consignment arrives in GB. If you have any, any, excuse me, if you have any questions on meeting composite product export health certification process, please contact your local veterinary uh, team and make sure that you, uh, make sure that you have a key step is to have all your traceability documents available. Um, we will put up at the end of the slides, we will put up uh, details of the contact numbers for traces, the traces help desk and also the Brexit call health desk, which can take queries, specific queries you have. Moving on to dairy products. For dairy products, the system for applying for a dairy health certificate is slightly different. Exporters will need to apply for a certificate through the department's dairy product certification system, DPCS. This is the system we use for certification to ex certification of exports uh, for all dairy products to tour countries. The application should be made seven days or five working days in advance of export. The key message is, is that you make the application as early as possible. When making the application, not all the inform information needs to be made at the same time of at the time of application. Amendments can be made to the application before sign off. As the, as the information becomes available before the export date. However, the earlier the full information is known, the easier it would be to have the certification provided in line with planned export date and time. Once the EHC process is completed, the original EHC is made available in hard copy to the exporter via the, the DAFM's newly created dairy hubs. As with all EHCs, the exporter should send a copy of to the GB importer for uploading to IPAS. In the event of further queries, in relation to dairy exports, please contact dairy certs help desk at agriculture.gov.ie. Again, details of this these contact this contacts uh, details will be provided at the end, on the slides. The key difference between meat products and dairy products is the is the IT system which is used to generate and apply for export health certificates. Moving on to animal byproducts. Applications for animal byproducts should also be made through the Traces IT system and the relevant regional veterinary office should be emailed to be notified, notified of the upcoming certificate, or upcoming export. Export, uh, the veterinary office start alert to the new EHG application will carry out preliminary checks and the application will return if edits are needed. Staff in the veterinary office perform desk-based checks to review consignment details on traces. For example, product type, weight, number of units, container and seal numbers. The veterinary inspector verifies that the requirements of the EHC are met. This includes on-site risk-based inspections of consignments by the veterinary inspector. Operate, operator seals under, under DATM supervision if required. Operate, excuse me, uh, operator seals are required under DATM super, DAF supervision. The DAFM prints off the copy of the EHA and provides it to the EHA is signed and stamped by the veterinary officer. For sites with a permanent presence, the hard copy EHC is available from the site. For sites with a non-permanent presence, hard copy EHC is available to the exporter by collection from the, sign, the signing veterinary office. Veterinary office. 
table legs. Applications for table legs should be made through the Traces IT system also. And on receipt of the local CERT reference number from Traces, the exporter will be required to submit an application form with supporting doc documents by emailing egghealthcerts at agriculture.gov.ie. This should be done five days in advance of, ex of the export date. The application and supporting documentation will be reviewed and if an order, the EHC will be issued and the CERT will be sent to the exporter. Finally, for honey, like meat, the meat certification pro process, applications for honey export health certs will be made through the Traces IT system. Applications for sunny, honey export health certificates must also be alerted to DAFM's honey inspectors at beekeeping at agriculture.gov.ie. They are located in the department's laboratory in Backwestern. Applications for EHG should be made three days, three working days in advance of the export date. So that's a run through the key steps and how to be, how to how to secure uh, an export health set for the different commodities. I just want to now emphasise some key messages uh, to get ready for the first of October. Familiarise yourself with the Irish and UK customs and SBS requirements for exporting goods to Great Britain. A key element here is to identify the right certs for your products. If possible, restructure processes to apply for export health sales during normal working hours to, uh, to ensure that uh, the resource capacity on the, on the, for, for the, the competent authority matches the business requirement. Ensure full traceability information and supporting documentation is available. Put in place a system to organise these documents to align with your certifying officer's needs. Identify the right staff to interact with traces and the dairy certification system as appropriate. Minimise the number of consignments needing certification by, dis by considering distribution from within the UK, within Great Britain, excuse me, where possible. Access the information material and guidance on the UK and Irish government websites. And the final message I would say is engage, engage, engage with your local veterinary supervisor. This is critical to ensuring that there is alignment between the competent authority who are certifying and the business needs of the, of the FBOs on the ground. Finally, I have a couple of slides at the end which show the, the, the supports that are available and the key and links to previous presentations and, up, and details about upcoming web webinars. These will be in the slide pack that cir circulated after, the, after this webinar. And finally, the final slide is all the contact details for all the relevant uh, call centres and state agencies. Uh, please do contact us if you have queries. We're more than happy to engage and make sure that we, we uh, do our best to answer all questions. So with that, I'm going to say thank you for listening and we move on to the, the next session. So I'll hand you back to Margaret and then we have a chance for questions and answers. Thank you.